hey, did you hear about that uh, <laughs> that Karen movie that's coming out? Oh, good lord! I watched the trailer for that. Oh my gosh! We should do a reaction to that. Let's do a reaction yeah. with our faces right after the intro plays. If, how about that? Here we sure, go. sounds great. What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. That means it's time for the tagline, and our faces are... Uh, I guess we kind of made, like, the same face there, but whatever. <laughs> How are y'all doing tonight? We are the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. My name is Chris Adams. And we are here to talk about movies and make you feel good about movies and stuff. Yeah! It's so tagline. Not Karen. Huh? So not Karen. <laughs> That's not Karen. No, uh, yeah, I watched that trailer earlier. Also, Ooh, just yeah, I saw that like Jordan Peele was was like uh, uh, trending. Couldn't figure out words. Uh, business as usual here. Uh, so I couldn't uh, like I saw that Jordan Peele was trending, and I was like, why? And then I saw that it was all pointing to his Karen. I was like, this isn't a movie that he made. We would have known about this long time ago. Plus, it would be a lot better. <laughs> Karens are not the social commentary that Jordan Peele would want to make right now. That, I don't think that's the way he, way he goes. The only thing I liked about it, I did like, uh, was it Taryn Manning is playing the Karen of the movie? I don't know why I finger quoted. She actually is named Karen in the trailer. Um, but like she was uh, Eminem's crazy girlfriend at the beginning of 8 Mile. Uh, she was the crackhead uh, Pensatucky in Orange is the New Black. I like the idea of that role for her. Just the movie looks terrible. <laughs> like it, it just looks, looks so bad. bad. It looks I don't so like, bad. I don't like they went like just the straight like racist route with it as well. They just couldn't make her a person who just goes around complaining to managers about well, everything. Yeah. Yeah, but okay, but so like if we're talking about like social commentary and everything, just going into the store and complaining that your coupon's out of date is a, not a good doesn't make for a good movie. plot of a movie. You have to include the she's a racist stuff also because that's what brings out a potential good plot. Even though the movie looks awful. <laughs> yeah. Uh this kind of looks like uh like a a bad version of was it Lakeview Terrace? And if you remember, Lake yeah. New Terrace didn't get very good reviews either. It was a, it, I thought it was an all right thriller, but anyways, uh, let's move away from Karen. <laughs> I just felt like mentioning that right off the so, bat, but here, here, here's what you can do. A fun fact. Here's a fun fact about me. This is the fourth time my face has been seen online in some various place today. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We did, uh, well, you did Twitch earlier. Yeah. Um, uh, apparently, we were seen during the uh, FCL earlier today, and then we did uh, Brandon Hanna's show uh, talking about science and stuff. That was a lot of fun. Uh, if, so if y'all didn't see that, go check out Brandon Hanna. He's he is a competitor on the movie trivia showdown. Check out his YouTube channel. Uh, we were talking about like turning plastic bottles into vanilla. And how starch could be a form of like source of electricity. So, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of vanilla in there. <laughs> Very vanilla tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Very vanilla. Wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, it, we've had a lot of fun with the uh, with like streaming and being online all day today. Even though I've only been here for like technically half of them. Um. So. Moving on, let's get to questions. Y'all have any questions, comments, anything that y'all are uh, curious about? Streamlabs.com slash Cinefanatics. Uh, yeah, that one up there. You can also do the Super Chat through YouTube. We we like those as well. We're not opposed to those. Streamlabs is the preferred <coughs> venue. It's, yeah, it's so. just that Streamlabs doesn't take 50% of your Super Chat whenever you yeah. send it in. So. Yeah. Uh, as we start the show here, I see uh, we've got Garth is here. Let's say poor Taron Manning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I exactly. love the I love the comments. Cameron Rice said they didn't even do color correction, and someone said maybe that's the point. <laughs> I mean, good point there. I mean, uh, and then we've also got Tyler. Tyler's joining us as well. How are y'all doing tonight, y'all? 
uh anyone else if y'all are here watching us live sound off in the chat so we know so we can interact with you uh this is gonna be kind of like a fairly like i guess news light episode there really wasn't anything like major pressing for us to talk about uh so this is gonna be a uh i, I would say this whole episode tonight is gonna be a an ama ask me anything focused type of episode so anything y'all want to say y'all want to drop uh drop those in the chat uh, speaking of the chat, I do see uh, Mr. Brandon Hanna. Again, we were a part of his show earlier. Uh, he's dropping in the chat to say hello, hello, sir. Nice to see you again today. Uh, so, uh, yeah, again, we had a lot of fun with that over there. So make sure you it's, check out his channel. It's the periodic table. The periodic table, yep. yep. Um, but we'll start off with one right off the bat. Uh, question for Robert. You saw on your watch that you missed a call. Did you call him back? Uh, I'm not exactly certain what this is about. This is a little weird. Okay. Um, why, why are people asking you about missing a call on your watch? It's, it's a weird thing to randomly ask about. Yeah, I don't know. Um, anyways. <laughs> uh, in actuality, uh, no, I have not called anyone back yet. <laughs> so so bad at that yeah uh guys uh let's see what else we got patreon patreon.com slash cinefanatics hop on the tier that is right for you on there coming up very soon uh we have rescheduled the movie trivia hangout night uh we were going to do it earlier this month uh, but we have moved it to, let's see, what is today? The 22nd. Uh, it has been moved to next Monday, this coming Monday, the 28th. Uh, that will more likely be at our usual time of 9 Central, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If you are at the Maverick tier or higher, you could come join us. Uh, we're just going to be bouncing off some uh, movie trivia, uh, particularly uh, because one of us, has a match on the FCL that they need to be prepared for. I don't why know you gotta why. Say it like that. Why you gotta say it like that? I got a match this Tuesday. <laughs> I got to study uh, for it. Well, I didn't know how you got a how you got a match or anything, but Brad, Brad, Brad gave me a match. Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> nice of Brad to give you a match then. Yeah. Uh, real quick, because uh, Brandon Hanna saying that he's got to take off and he'll be lurking. But let's see his question. Can Michael Keaton's Batman make vanilla out of plastic bottles with the power of starch that was charged by Ezra Miller's flash? Uh, Brandon, I'm going to need you to draw out the diagram of that question just so we have a visual representation of what exactly the hell the sentence would look like. Well, I'll tell you this much. <laughs> Batman has all the time in the world to do whatever this is because he's not spending it with Catwoman, clearly. Oh, no, he is hey, not. Is so. hey, that joke getting old yet? Maybe. Although, 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 in his defense, uh, Brandon Hanna did ask specifically about uh, Michael Keaton's Batman, That's and fair. Michael Keaton would definitely Michael Keaton's def Batman definitely does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's... Catwoman's Michelle Pfeiffer. Let's just be honest. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's true. <laughs> let's move away from this joke now. <laughs> um. Anyway, so Patreon Hangout's going to be on Monday. Uh, and then. Uh, I believe Tuesday you have your match, your FCL match uh, that has been announced. You are going up against who? I'm going up against Travis Fishburne. He's got a quick turnaround for match. Yeah, he I did. That, I guess I kind of do too. I mean, well, I was the week before him. So yeah. what I like about this is that I believe we're the undercard to mm -hmm. uh, Maxwell, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maxwell and Robert Montano are the main event. That one's fun. That what, what, that's the what, one I'm I'm really eager to see. What's interesting here though is that once again it's a it's an event led by me and Maxwell. Yeah. <laughs> uh that one though I'm eager to see because thus far uh Robert Montano from Late to the Party, which I'm expecting him to pop up any second now that I've said his name. Uh yeah, that's the way it works. Uh he was a very good, very challenging competitor. Uh, I, of course I played him. He went perfect. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see because, uh, Max knows what he's doing. He knows what he's saying. He knows his, he knows his movie trivia. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious, like 
if he's ready to go up against like Robert Montano. I have faith in him. I have faith that it's going to be a very interesting match. But Robert here's Montano the, is is a pretty pretty big name in the FCL right now. Here's the thing: Maxwell did not go perfect in his first match, Mm-mm. but he's capable of going perfect. It's yeah. just mood and day for him. Um, Montano, we know is capable of going perfect because that's pretty much all he's done so far. So what what we're gonna look at is I'm betting right now we're going to have overtime. We'll have overtime in that match and it might go for a while and it's, it's anyone's game. Either one of those two guys could win that. That's just going to come down to the, the question, the type of question. Oh man, it's going to be, that's going to be a good one. But I will Um, say, I do believe that me and uh, Travis Fishburne are evenly matched as well. So that's, mm -hmm. these are both going to be, Again, take taking the bias of myself out of this. These are going to be two really good matches this Tuesday, this come, next well, Tuesday. So, I am eager for both of those matches. I can't wait to be in the chat to watch both of them. So make sure y'all are there. Also, twitch.tv slash the schmodown. That'll be next Tuesday. At, what is that? That's three Pacific, uh, six Eastern. I'm yeah. Doing the same shtick again. <laughs> what same shtick? I'm not doing that again. Oh, okay. Um, uh, this is great because this is the day before I get my second shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you saw competitors who uh, got their shot and then had to compete. I'm competing and then getting my shot, which is going to be funny because the very next, uh, the very next night. Well, okay, we're talking about yeah, uh, probably not. Week. What are we? Where? What day are we on? We're on the twenty second. Okay, so the next night will be the Loki the Loki review. Um, and then we're still talking about Patreon. Hold on. I'm trying to get my uh, ducks in a row here. (laughs) So for you guys watching, Uh, and then then Thursday, Thursday will be the FCL match replay. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Maybe that's depending on how I feel post shot. We'll see. Uh, right now. So right now that'll be, uh, tentatively for the Thursday afterwards, a little bit of a change on this. Uh, we are going to be changing the Patreon level for these replays. Uh, I want, I want to see like more people come in and be invested in this. If, uh, come watch us, see like what our thoughts, feelings, opinions are, and then maybe, Come join us for like the movie trivia sessions. Uh, So starting with this, with this replay on Thursday, which is going to be the first of the month. uh, If you are at the dude tier, which is the same tier to join us for Patreon watch alongs, you will have access to uh, the FCL replay, which is fun. That's where he's going to sit here and tell you what was going through his head during the match and whatnot. Yep. 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 Uh, Garth. Uh, no, that's tomorrow, and I'm not running it. I'm just, I just, the way it works, I have just a specific movie I'm asking questions about. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's that's tomorrow. I'm t- we're talking about next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so so many uh confusing <laughs> getting all the calendar stuff. I need to have yeah. like the calendar like to be able to show like on the screen here. Hey, here's what we're doing. Um. Anyways, and then Saturday, uh, looks like you're doing uh, Bad Batch episodes nine and ten. Not this Saturday, no. That's the oh. yeah the Saturday the Saturday afterwards. Again, I'm trying to yes. Okay, I'm yeah. looking at two different months. <laughs> yeah, we should be doing nine and ten. Uh, that actually. So if you guys have watched uh, the latest Bad Batch uh, breakdown that we had to me and Adam had to record and then put up on Monday. Um, put up yesterday. Uh, I don't know if I, actually, I don't even remember if he said it in the video. It might've been afterwards. Uh, we might have to finagle around if it's that Saturday or what we're doing. Uh, I, ideally we don't have to pre-shoot again, but it just depends on, uh, cause he's going to be in Vegas for a while. He's, he's in Vegas right now. So he might still be there and be busy that night doing something or he's wrapping up and might have to be on the road either way. Uh, stay tuned to the, uh, Cinefanatics Twitter because we will 
absolutely let you know what the Bad Batch breakdown looks like. If I have to record it again, we'll record it again. But right now, it should be that Saturday. But it is possible that that could change based on where Adam is at in the country. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the other thing that uh, I wanted to mention is uh, we've decided that uh, in celebration of Black Widow coming out very soon on Monday the 5th uh, of July, we will be doing a public watch along of Captain America, the first Avenger. This is in celebration of not only Black Widow coming out that week, but the day before was July 4th with the perfect time to watch the Captain America movie. It just it just worked out for our uh, MC because that's going to fall in line with the rest of our MC watch alongs that we've been doing slowly over the course of time. Uh, yeah. It just worked out that Captain America fell right in between Black Widow and July 4th. So again, this is going to be a public watch along. We will do a Patreon watch along, which I believe we are going to be doing the next week. And we'll give more of a heads up as we get closer to it. But I believe that one we're looking at doing Space Jam, the first yep. Space Jam right before the new Space Jam comes out. Uh, so yep. that will be a lot of fun. <laughs> Just laughing at how funny that movie is now that we're adults. It um, aged. It aged. Yeah, it, yeah, it's aged in some places, probably not very well. Uh, but yeah, Monday the 5th, public watch along Captain America, the first Avenger. Come back. It's free for everyone to come hang out and watch it with us. So it's streaming on Disney Plus if you have that, or if you have it on Blu ray, DVD, whatever, watch America, along yeah. with us. That'll you're be saying Space Jam. <laughs> no, Space Jam is on HBO Max. Yeah. So yep. that should be there for that. Uh, the other things, real quick for housekeeping, so we can get to like AMA stuff. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we will be doing episode three of Loki. Uh, joining us will be Miss Kelsey Kirkland from the two-time award-winning uh, after show of the year, award-winning call to action. She will be joining us as we talk about episode three of Loki. So far, this show is really weird and got my curiosity peaked. So uh, I can't wait to go over that one uh kelsey's been a blast to have joining us on these uh after show reaction review episodes so it, hopefully this next one's going to be good because we got a lot of questions that came off of the end of the second episode and this third one i'm expecting to get a lot of answers and probably a lot of stuff to just really like rifle through and figure out and break down so to speak yeah exactly uh, it's it's been a crazy show. I love it. Yeah, I want more of it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, going back to the chat real quick. Uh, AJ Lancaster said he slept 16 hours the day after his second shot. Oof, that's a good that. sleep though. Yeah, I mean, I do like my sleep. So here's the thing. Right now, my honest plan for the day after is I'm just gonna hang out and watch movies. I mean, that's what I did. That's my I got plan. I, I got I got the shot and I was just tired the next day. I just I'm not laid here and cranked out some movies. I'm not going to be up. I'm not going to be doing work. I'm just I'm just not. Even if even if I probably feel fine the next day, I'm probably still going to be like, you know what? I'm still going to take it easy anyway, just because I got the shot. Let's just take it easy, no matter what. I'm not going to go out and be crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stay home, just watch some movies I need to catch up on. Good fellas, <coughs> and you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might be a good one to to knock out while you're uh, almost knocked out. That might be a good one to watch, fella. Mm -hmm. uh, also in the chat, we see uh, Pedro is here. Good evening, Pedro. friends. Good evening, sir. Good to see How you. was the day, guys? It was busy. It's it was a day. very, very busy day. Tuesdays are usually very busy for us. It's so insane. <laughs> so insane. Yep. Uh, Pedro is someone that we've seen. He's been uh, checking out the Loki watch along. So uh, if you have, if you're watching us right now and you haven't watched the Loki watch along, do breakdown. the reverse Pedro. Loki yeah, the breakdown. Lo Loki breakdown. Do the reverse Pedro. Watch us here and then come hang out with us for the breakdown. Much like Pedro's watched us there and is now here. <laughs> the reverse Pedro. The reverse Pedro. <laughs> That's awesome. Um. Anyways, uh, yeah, Garth, I believe I could, uh, didn't age well. Yeah. No, the song is aged perfectly fine. The song is great. The person who sings it, no. no. That's the thing. Like, I know of a lot of people that are able to do this whole, like, separating the artist from the art 
type yeah. of thing. I love uh, usual like, suspects. Like I'll still watch Usual Suspects. I love mm-hmm. that movie. But I'm I'm okay with like understanding Kevin Spacey and eh, not necessarily good, whatever. Uh, but like I don't know of anyone who has still listened to R. Kelly music lately, especially after that R. Kelly documentary came out. Everyone was like, mm, "No, I'm not listening to I Believe I Can Fly ever again." And like, man, that was such like a banger back in like the '90s too. To be fair, like that's the only R. Kelly song I ever like really. I mean, there might have been like one other one that was like super popular. One or two other ones that are super he, popular. Yeah, he, had a, he had a good pop, a good amount of them. I liked his uh, Gotham City song on Batman and Robin soundtrack. Yeah, I guess that was alright. But for the most part, nah, nah, pass. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yes, the Ordep. What's the Ordep? Reverse Pedro. Oh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> Didn't even read that. Uh, did you watch any new movies lately? Did I watch any new movies lately? That's a question for Letterbox. Let's ask Letterbox. Hey, Letterbox, did I watch any new movies lately? I know of one you watched lately. Oh, we did watch one that we actually need to give a review of. I forgot to even like, we forgot to even like put that in anything about this because I haven't finished it. <laughs> ah, that's true. You I didn't still finish haven't finished it. watching it. All right, so Hello. guys, here's the thing: we didn't put it in the uh, in the outline. We didn't put it on the thumbnail. Uh, here's my review for Luca. It's all right. That, it's here's okay. my review. I started watching it, got tired. I was like, I'm going to bed, and I haven't turned it back on. Just yeah, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was really the animation, gorgeous. P- Pixar does best what Pixar does best, and that is actually animation. Uh, story was kind of bland for me. It just didn't hit home for me. It might, I, I see a lot of people saying that they liked it and good for them. Cause I believe that when people like work really hard on these films, uh, they deserve to have an audience appreciate their film unless it's Karen. Um, otherwise I say like, great. I'm glad that Luca has an audience. I'm glad there's people out there that really enjoyed it. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. Uh, you do letterbox. I believe you do, doing, do, you do do Letterbox. I've been doing Letterbox for like half a year now. I believe you can find him on Letterbox at that address that's below his name, down below his picture. You can also find me on my Letterbox at the same address that's below my name, that's below my picture video window thingy here. Garth knows yeah, I do Letterbox. Letterbox. He's liked some of my, my reviews. He, know, he mm-hmm. knows I'm on there. Yeah. Um... That was the only new movie that uh, that you watched over the past week, Luca. Yes, yeah, that was the only new one. Uh, so for me, uh, this one's gonna sound really odd, uh, but there was one Kevin Smith movie I had never seen, <gasps> and I finally knocked it out over this past week. They gasp. And I will say I love Kevin Smith, a uh, fantastic director. I love Ooh. like all all his zany weirdness and stuff. I love. Ooh, watch out! But I can completely understand Ooh. why I haven't gotten around to watch Yoga Hosers Ooh. until now. Ooh. Rachel Silvestrini just woke up in a cold sweat somewhere, and she's going to come back to Texas and claw you. I've talked, I've talked to Rachel about uh, about how I haven't seen Yoga Hosers yet, and she's like, ah. I mean, you have to watch it. You're a Kevin Smith fan, which I completely agree. You, if you like Kevin Smith on the level that me and, like, say Rachel Silvestrini are, you Is have to watch Yoga Hosers. But uh, it is not my favorite film of his. I, I mean, I don't know. I might I have to double check my uh, letterbox, but I might have it tied with like cop out as like the worst of, in my opinion, the Kevin Smith movies. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Yoga Hosers was Kevin Smith and Johnny Depp making a movie for the daughter and with all of them in it, too. So Kevin Smith and his wife and daughter are in it. And then Johnny Depp, his wife and their their daughter, or I guess Johnny Depp's wife at at some point yeah the mother the mother of his daughter is also in the movie <laughs> Ooh, which person is this hey yeah <laughs> it's not amber heard right no yeah don't touch that one <laughs> yeah no not amber heard 
Yikes. Um, but yeah, saw that. Uh, whatever. Uh, I watched Airheads for the first time. That was a good movie. But Adam Sandler, Brendan Fraser, and uh, Schmodown. Got uh, it. Adam oh, Sandler and Brendan Fraser. Steve, cool. Steve Buscemi. There you go. Uh, that was th- that one I enjoyed. I thought that was that was pretty good. Next time, just uh, say you're out of your element, Donnie, and I'll help you. Yeah, I was out of my element. I couldn't pull his name off the top of my head. I, le- I yeah. was within 15 seconds. I think I'm good. You're out uh, of your element, the, Donnie. Yeah. The other one that I watched for the first time, and I feel like I was about to lose some street cred for not seeing this, but now I feel like I got it back because it's this went from a movie I've never seen that I should have seen long time ago, and it jumped up into the list of probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Ooh. That was uh, The Iron Giant. So good. Good man, I love that movie. Oh, I love that movie. The animation, the voices, the dialogue, the story, everything was just perfect. That was like giving a chef's kiss a chef's kiss. Like it was just the one of the most perfect movies ever made. Yeah. Rock tree. Yeah. Rock tree. Oh, that was family corona. (laughs) Yeah, I kept waiting for that. Uh, yeah. Can I be friends with can Hogarth family? Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for the Iron Giant to give Hogarth a uh, Corona. <laughs> I am Groot. <laughs> yeah. uh, but such a beautiful movie. Absolutely loved it. Just oh, I, like that. That's probably actually going to be one like within like probably the next month. I will probably watch it again. I need to watch it again. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I, I remember very little from it and I need to, I just need to watch it again. It almost feel like a whole brand new watch for me. Cause it's been so long. Mm-hmm. Oh, that movie had me sold like from the very beginning when the dude has to get the, uh, the squirrel out of his pants in, at the diner. He's like, he apologizes to everyone. Like, sorry, I got to do this. And he opens up his pants and you see the squirrel falls out, like falls out of his crotch type of thing. I was like, okay, this movie is going to be good. Which one of us do you <laughs> think is easily amused? That's not what sold it for me. They, like I wasn't completely sold on this movie from the squirrel squirrel crotch, but by the end of the movie, I was like, "Yep, perfect. This is such a good movie." So, Carth, perfect movie for me. My dad has been building sculptures from junkyards for over fifty years and still does it up in Maine where he lives. Then there's Hogarth. Just get rid of the hoe, and it's me. <laughs> That's, that might be one of my new favorite things that Garth has said. Just get rid of the hoe and it's me. Just get rid of the hoe and you got me. <laughs> and you got me. Wow. <laughs> Family friendly channel, y'all. Yeah, he's talking about the first two letters of the name Hogarth. Oh, okay. What are you talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> it's still family. That's funny. Uh, those of y'all in the chat, if y'all watch any new movies, anything y'all could recommend, drop those in. Let's talk about those. Uh, let's do- let's dive into the movie news uh, real quick. Uh, but before we do, again, y'all, this is gonna be like movie news light. Um, we're effectively about probably halfway through this live stream tonight, uh, depending on how these questions go. Y'all have any like AMA questions for us? I mean, we really haven't gotten that much of a chance to talk about like us personally, uh, other than like this little bit at the beginning, we're like, Hey, how have you been over this past week or so? So if you have any questions, like, what do you want to know from us? Like what's our favorite seafood? What, what dipping sauce do we prefer on our chicken McNuggets? Or if you want to know actually something like kind of personal or whatever, just let's, let's have this like viewer to, uh, I don't know, performer, entertainer, content creator. Let's, let's, let's get this connection started here. Whatever the hell you call us. Yeah. L- l- let's build this relationship here. Let's build some bonds and become one giant family. AJ just saw The Rocketeer for the first time. Last night. I watched Ooh. it for the first time a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, Congrats that's a good on one. that. What, what were your thoughts on that? That's a good one. Yeah. I, I, I know there's a couple of people, especially like in the Schmodown community, like uh, I know P, PJ Campbell uh, speaks highly of that movie. And I actually, I will agree with him. That is one of the best overall, like, uh, like good superhero movies. Yeah. 
not necessarily straight from a comic book, but I believe I, there was a comic at one point of it. But yeah, uh, Will McLean already dropping in the question: smooth or crunchy peanut butter? Smooth. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm a smooth person. I remember as a kid, like having the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in my lunch, and I remember the little pieces of like peanut in there. There was a couple of times I took that bite and it would get shoved up in the gums. Just I'm not a huge fan of that. Like I'm I'm very careful when like eating Doritos just because I don't want the piece of it to be right. like a glass shard. Just uh um so yeah, I kind of stuck with smooth. I'm not a fan of crunchy PB and J's either. That whole thing should just be smooth as butter. Smooth as peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like I don't like crunchy nuts too much. But anyway, guys, go ahead and uh, wow. Okay, go ahead and send in your uh, your further questions and everything in the chat. We will get to them. We will scroll back up and highlight those. We're going to go ahead and talk about some of this movie news stuff too. Yeah, great ride, good movie. Timothy Dalton was fantastic in that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, box office numbers. Did we have anything really happen in the box office over the weekend? What is today's Tuesday? So the only thing we had that was like new to the box office was the hitman's bodyguards, wife's next door neighbors, cousins. Uh, <sighs> you know what's funny? I was actually on one of Ben Goddard's streams, and he was actually saying. How long do you guys think it takes for somebody to make that exact joke that you just made just now? <laughs> did, you like, say, did, you, did you do the cousin twice removed part? Did you say that too? No, but I, I really was trying to figure out like how to like tie it back to like either Lone Star or Darth Hel or Dark Helmet or whatever. That way I could bring the full joke around full circle to Spaceballs, but uh my my ability to improvise on the scene was kind of diminished there by like the fourth or fifth one that I added to it. But yeah, um, <laughs> it is, it's pretty funny. So Hitman's wife's bodyguard did about 11.4 million. Former roommate. Former roommate, exactly. Did about 11.4 million in the box office. So not, That's not it's bad. not strong. It's not, I guess, it, I mean, it depends on what we call strong or not strong or not bad or whatever now as we're still coming out of a pandemic. I like but, how like every, all of that has shifted. Yeah. It's definitely shifted because you have to consider how many audience people are still wanting to actually go to the theater yet, which it is growing. It is growing because, I mean, Quiet Place Part 2 did another $9 million this weekend. I think that thing's huge. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that the fact that I'm not seeing like anything from like In the Heights, really. In the Heights is number six. That is ridiculous. What's What else is above that? You still have like what, Conjuring is probably in there? Cruella Conjuring, Peter Rabbit 2. Oh, yeah. Quiet, Quiet Place Part 2 and Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. It is, it is incredibly sad that In the Heights is number six in the box office right now. Yeah. And that's that's taking taking all the, the, again, coming out of the pandemic stuff aside and the fact that it is available on HBO Max. But from what I hear, it's not doing fantastic on HBO Max either, which is insane to me. Because this movie has such great word of mouth right now that you would think that it would have legs. It would be picking up some steam and be doing really good. I don't know. It's kind of, it's sad. And I'm hoping that this doesn't actually affect uh, John M. Chu's doing Wicked. Because mm -hmm. I think that would be, that would still be really fun to see. Oh, I'm so eager for that. But on top of that also, I, I know there's a lot of the story is around uh is around like Latino based stories um, and how, you know, we don't necessarily see a whole lot of those come through all the time in the theaters, at least not to the magnitude that you see of in the Heights. And there's a lot of talk around like the fact that in the Heights isn't performing as well, kind of being detrimental to seeing further stories like that in the future. That's sad too. Cause like there's, there's so many good stories uh, of the different uh, Hispanic cultures that would be mm -hmm. really, really, really cool to see. I mean, look at look free Coco. Coco, exactly. Look at Coco. Coco is one of those that is like highly regarded, is got <laughs> such music, a following to it. Music by Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Me. Did he? Did he did the music to that, didn't he? I could have sworn he did. he did. He did Moana. I know he did Moana. I could have sworn he did Coco also. 
or he had a uh, hand in in the music I'm, for Coco. I'm not going to pretend to try to know if I remember that or not. So, um, I do know though that uh, that Coco is is up there. I mean, so like the fact that In the Heights isn't performing so well just it just kind of bums me out a little bit. The other uh, thing with that though is we don't have the numbers of its how much it was played on HBO Max, and then also. Have- do you take into we, account the times it was played again on HBO Max? Yeah, and here's the thing. I've seen it twice, once in the theaters and once on HBO Max. I'll probably end up watching it again here pretty soon at some point. So it's, I don't know. It, it's going to be on HBO Max for the rest of the, uh, at least what, mm. another 15 so, days or so. Yeah, I would say it's about to leave HBO Max pretty soon, and then it will be gone for like another two months, and then it'll come back. It'll come back. I honestly think that in the Heights is going to end up getting more. Uh, it's going to end up getting more on on like video release mm-hmm. and streaming later on. Um, it just is just it just I think it just hit the wrong time. I think if that thing got released like later on in the year, if they saved it till like maybe September or something, we would probably see different numbers on it. Especially if they were able to like start building marketing back up, because that's one thing that you didn't see a whole lot of it. It's like there wasn't a whole lot of strong marketing push as it was being released or coming to be released again. It, there was like last year when it was initially supposed to be released, but not, not this time around. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't Lin-Manuel Miranda. It was Michael Giacchino that did Coco. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I just I, I I'm just curious as to like the perspective of like the actual like people reporting on this, uh, people who aren't like just starting a YouTube channel kind of thing, uh, <laughs> high higher up levels in in the industry when they're reporting these numbers, are they looking at it from the perspective of the pandemic and theaters opening back up, people coming back to the theater when it performs over the weekend for 11 million? Typically, we would be like, "Whoo, that was a bomb." But now we're in the perspective of 11 million is actually pretty decent given like the current situation. 11 it's, million could be really good. It is really hard to say that any movie that's supposed to come out this year is going to make the full return on its budget. I don't even. Uh, I say that. Maybe by F9, December. F9 might be. And Black Widow. The thing is, like, so Black Widow is also going to have the thing is that does actually also have the uh, the premiere access on Disney Plus, so you'll have that as well. But that yeah. won't figure into box office numbers. So, yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's Black Widow is going to end up being the lowest performing MCU movie, which this is unfortunate movie. for that because then you're going to have a bunch of like idiots online who are going to be like, Black Widow is not performing well because it's a female led movie, and those people are going to be dumb. No, it's not performing well because of the time it's released in and the fact that it's also going to be on Disney Plus. Yeah. So we'll, we'll sit here saying the Spider-Man uh, No Way Home uh, probably will as well. The only thing with that yeah, one, though, sure. is I'm willing to bet the budget on that is probably insane. I w- I'm almost certain if, if the things that we've heard, the rumors that we've heard about that movie are true, I'm willing to bet that budget's going to be pretty close to being up there with uh like at least infinity war maybe not uh in game level uh but at least infinity war it will be one of the more expensive marvel hey. mcu movies there's what's up Maxwell? Max? how's it going man how's your uh how's your disney trip going how you doing yeah Running i'm kind of jealous, I'm kind right jealous of that yeah, yeah i uh, want to go back uh, to disney world so bad yeah, when, when the two of us went to Disney World, we were kids. I was you far. you barely remember any of it. <laughs> I, I I do remember it. Uh, but yeah, like I want to go back as an adult, where like I could go to like the different countries in Epcot and actually like do a shot of like whatever alcohol from that country. Like let's go do tequila and then vodka and like let's just hit up all these countries and do some stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I also remember, like, when I was a kid, was it they had Pleasure Island, which is where like all the bars and clubs were. And I remember as a kid, I loved Pinocchio, and Pleasure Island was not a place you wanted to go. I think our parents—I don't know if our parents went to Pleasure Island, like they stuck us like at a Disney daycare type of place for a night, and I think they went out there. And I'm <laughs> sitting here, my first thought was like, our parents are gonna turn into donkeys. <laughs> because of Pinocchio (laughs) but yeah (laughs) 
Max, were your ears burning? We were we were talking about your uh, your match coming up uh, next week in the FCL. Yeah, Max, it's you and me. It's you and me again, leading the pack on at <laughs> FCL this next week. Are you two going to be the ones who pull who pull out of the match with the win, though? The phrasing is kind of yeah. I know. I, like I, I had to question it after it left my mouth, but whatever. <laughs> I had to question that one also. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so, let's let's do some speed run through some of these uh, news topics real quick because I want to get to just some AMA stuff only. Yeah. Again, y'all got AMA questions? Drop those in super chat, Streamlabs. Let us know what you got. Uh, so it was announced that Rachel Zegler, who's playing Maria in the West Side Sto- Steven Spielberg's West Side Story that comes out in December, uh, she has been casted in a live action Disney Snow White portraying Snow White. Uh, I like this. This this is one of those cases where I think like the actress really does look like the the cartoon character. I Kinda mean. Does. They they didn't every once in a while they get them matching pretty well. Like I liked um was it Mina Masoud as Aladdin? I liked him. Like some of the looks of how they do it, perfect. Um, the one that was like really disappointing was anyone who was in the Lion King because I really don't think they looked too much like their characters at all, except for yeah. Seth Rogen as Pumbaa. He did look a lot like Pumbaa. <laughs> <laughs> or however he laughs. I can't wow. do it. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. I did, I did just re-watch Zack and Miri last night before going to bed. Yeah, don't ever watch that movie right before going to bed. That's all I'm Never gonna... mind. Let's... <laughs> Why? Wow. Why? Okay. What's the next? <laughs> what, what are we... Yeah, she looks good as Snow White. Cool. I got it. <laughs> I, I like the idea. We've seen a lot of live action Snow Whites. I like the idea that this is like a Disney one because the ones that we've seen lately, like the was a is it Kristen Stewart that did the Huntsman ones? Like, uh God, those movies were just so uh, not a fan of them. But this one might be interesting. I think they the out of the Disney live action movies, Cinderella was really good. Yeah. So I'm hoping they have that same kind of view with the Snow White one. Um, we got a ton of Transformers uh, news today. They have announced that the next Transformers movie will be called Rise of the Beasts. Uh, we talked about this before that it was going to include characters from Beast Wars in it. Um, we got a little bit more of a confirmation on that today. This movie will take place in 1994, uh, which is a great time for like the 90s for movies in general. Uh, yeah. all, like all the best movies came out in 1994. Uh, they did say that this movie will include both Optimus Prime and Optimus Primal from Beast Wars, and that also the villains of Beast Wars, which are the Terracons, uh, led by Scourge, uh, will be the main villains. While the Decepticons will still be a part of the Transformers story, the Terracons are the main focus in this. Um, now again, we again we talked about this before. I really w- hadn't watched Beast Wars. I was not like interested in Beast Wars when that came out, so I don't know. I don't really have like a major connection to this. But this movie is being directed by Stephen Capel Jr. and yeah. I like the idea of that just because it's not being given back to Michael Bay. But I kind of wish Travis Knight was doing it too. So. And I believe Stephen Cable Jr. is the one who did Creed too. So, yeah. So we know that he's uh, he's good at making a uh, a good movie. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, Transformers is kind of hit or miss lately. Uh, and you didn't have really any connection to Beast Wars either. You never really watched no. that. Also, I, I never really had a connection to Transformers at all. I just. Mm-hmm. They so, did say they did say this will be the early early of the transformer. This is still kind of like a prequel uh, before the uh, Sam Witwicky ones that we knew from like 2007 on. Yeah. Uh, that so we're going to get like the Generation One looking Optimus Prime, not the big metal one that we saw in 2007, where you really can't tell is that an arm, leg, inner thigh. I can't I can't tell. 
it's just the cluster a bunch F of, of like metal and gears. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't tell what I'm looking at here. Uh, the way that they made him look, he was kind of like generation one looking at the beginning of uh, Bumblebee. And I love yeah. that the way they made the, all of them look at the beginning of that. Uh, those were, those were good. So I'm hoping for that level of quality on the look of the transformers, but yeah, I mean, that's what we, that's what anybody who like wants anything from transformers wants is just a whole movie of like the beginning of Bumblebee. I don't think that's what we're getting this time around, obviously, but I think we, uh, I think we're maybe heading in the right direction. We'll see. You're just hoping (laughs) because I think there's like two, the last two other transformers movies I hadn't watched. Or at least whatever that the last night I know I haven't watched that one. I yeah. think the one before that was Age of Extinction. I did see that one, unfortunately. Age of Extinction and the last night. Yeah. Ugh. Um. So here's hoping. <laughs> Hope that's good. Um. What else? We will move on to the last one. Let's go. With, let's talk about these uh, set photos that they've done for the Flash. Over this past week, there's been a bunch of photos that have come out, including like the logos of like the superheroes. And we got the Batman logo that had like the what looked like blood or strawberry jam dripped on it. Uh, it was very uh, Watchmen esque of the smiley button with the blood on there. Um, yep. And then, then we've got. Uh, a couple of like onset pictures. Uh, one of my favorites that they released was a onset photo of Michael Keaton uh, playing Bruce Wayne again, very Batman Beyond looking. And this is what I was actually really hoping for. I was hoping that they would use like the Batman Beyond version of Bruce Wayne as like the template for Michael Keaton here. Mm-hmm. Only because I'm really hoping that they are seriously pushing towards a live action uh, Batman Beyond and make that one tie back in at least to the first two uh, Tim Burton movies. Like it, it is all like a part of that universe. Might not necessarily Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, but that would be awesome. It would be really, really interesting to see that happen for sure. Uh, I'm just fascinated that we get. Uh, we get Michael Keaton back at Batman as Batman at all. I think that's, that's something that I don't think any of us really ever dreamed would happen. Like, Oh, the, for our first Batman, I mean, I say our first Batman, I'm not counting like Adam West and all that, but Mm -hmm. our first, our first Batman of the modern era, Batman films coming back and playing Bruce Wayne again. That's insane. So that's really cool. Uh, There is another set photo out there though. We're not, we're not showing that set photo. So there was a photo released of uh, was it Sasha Kelly uh, yeah. playing uh, Supergirl? Uh, I mean, I'll show our thumbnail again. Uh, this was the image that was for when she was first announced to be playing Supergirl. Uh, this was the image that was released. Um, the reason we're not showing it is it was after that photo. The photos of her on set in that costume were released. Uh, the Muschietti's, Andy Muschietti and his, I guess, I believe it's his wife, Barbara, um, have come out in pu- on public saying, please do not share this photo. Let's wait until we can give like the first look of Supergirl the proper attention and glory that it deserves. Um, essentially, there's been a lot of people saying like, eh, this this doesn't look right. The costume looks weird on her. It, the thing is, is you're looking like at the extreme raw photo. We are not seeing her moving, her flying. We're not seeing any like post-production work put into this. You're just seeing a bare template of it. Um, so therefore, I, I understand why the Muschietti's are not real eager for that picture to be leaking. Now, yeah. the downside to that is, yes, this is the internet. That picture is leaked. That's the first image of Supergirl, whether you like it or not, it's out there. But we as people who are running a movie YouTube channel, I mean, if you want to go see it, you know it's out there. You know how to go find it. We don't need to contribute. I do want to respect the wishes of the Muschietti's and that in that case. So uh, we're not going to show the paparazzi photos that were taken of it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I, in my opinion, I want to see like the image of her, the way that they want her to be shown. I will say this. Uh, Gar says the comment guys who 
originally created that that Supergirl and, and her design, uh, like shared it the most. Uh, and I understand why they did that too, because she actually like how she looks and her design in that costume looks exactly like their their design from the comics for her. She looks like almost one to one exactly the same. So I can see them getting like pretty hyped and pretty excited about that. Like, look, look, she looks exactly like what we drew in the comics. That's so cool. So I think that's 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 pretty neat. But other than that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think she looks all right. I think she I mean, she looks she looks fine. I don't know what to expect from this movie at all. So I'm not going to sit here and and act like, oh, Supergirl's in this. Why? I don't I don't <laughs> it's I don't know. I don't know what the story is. Uh, right now, the story looks like it's going to be all over the place, but I can I I trust that it's going to be a really interesting movie. Yeah, I don't know. What they're doing I like with this. It, but, you know, so we uh, we both of us were talking beforehand about since they do have uh, Michael Keaton playing the older Bruce Wayne, with the possibility of it hinting towards maybe the Batman Beyond uh, universe. Who would play uh, Terry McGinnis? Uh, yeah. AJ Lancaster here saying uh, Timothy Chalamet, which ah, uh, that's not a bad choice. Doesn't make me mad. Yeah, I, I mean, I could potentially see it. I think I want to see. I've seen him like do like a lot of these. I, I haven't seen him do something that is close to Batman Beyond. I think the closest we're gonna get out of that is gonna be Dune. Yeah, like I've seen uh, was it Little Women and Call Me by Your Name. That he's a great actor. He did Lady great Bird. in both of those movies. Lady Bird, yeah. He did great in all those movies, but none of those were like an action movie. I want to see like how he can do acting as like essentially a high schooler like he was in Lady Bird, but yeah. with the the action of being a Batman also. Uh exactly. but yeah, I think I think Dune's going to be the closest we're going to get to to seeing that kind of that that level from him. So yeah, otherwise on based on looks alone, yeah, I'm sold on Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, he look he looks pretty close to Terry. So that would be that'd be really, really interesting to see. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see if they even like push in that direction. Uh guys, again, uh, if y'all have any questions for us, anything you want to know, whether it's just something very superficial that is just funny to ask, or if you want to know anything about us, like actually personally, uh, we've got a lot of people watching. Let's like get to know us. What do you want to know? What, what is something that would like, if you knew this about us, maybe it would help sustain you being a bigger fan of us or something like that. I mean, that was, I guess the really cheesy way of asking, but I'm cool with it. <laughs> Break down the enigmas that are wrapped in mysteries that are <laughs> these what two do I white use, bread fools. What do I use? Right to, what do I use to get my hair so perfect every single day? Like perfect if y'all want to know, just ask. Perfect is a word. What do you use to get your hair so pointy? Um, I don't like to talk about it, to be honest. <laughs> it really, that one actually really kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. That whole situation was kind of rough. <laughs> Phrasing. Uh, what's your favorite Steve Martin movie? Uh, I think we got this the same one. one. I feel yeah, this one I feel like is uh, probably the easiest, one of the easiest ones for me to answer out of all of his movies. I'm probably going to have to go with The Jerk. Same. I love The Jerk. Such a good movie. The Jerk and then maybe followed up by uh, Roxanne. Roxanne was good. Yeah. Just that whole that whole scene in the bar where he's uh, where he's doing the making up all the, the jokes about the big nose. That yeah. whole that whole scene is just classic comedy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's your least favorite Steve Martin movie? Uh, cheaper by the Dozen. Oh, no, cheaper by the Dozen was cute. Eh. I would have to say Pink Panther. Although, like I say that, even though, like I do actually like quoting him trying to say hamburger, the, the burger, the burger. Like I do like quoting that. I thought that was kind of funny, but I mean, that's just it was really. Eh. <laughs> Uh, what do you use to get your hair so pointy? Uh, what's it called? You get the same stuff I do. Yeah, Suavecito. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the name brand. What is the actual stuff? What's it oh, called? Pomade. Pomade. Yeah, yeah, 
It's all pomade, straight up. <laughs> straight up. Yeah. <laughs> There's our <laughs> scrubs re scrubs reference for the night. What do I do with my hair? How about you just gel the hell out of it? Or you know, he says mo moose the hell out of it, straight up. Yeah. So Ryan Reynolds when he was on scrubs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, favorite classic movie before 1960? Uh, 12 Angry Men. Easy. Easy. That's such a great movie. Just how the whole thing shakes out in one room. Such a good movie. Uh, we said before 1960? Yep. Uh, I'm probably gonna go with, uh, Singing in the Rain. Ooh. Uh, I really enjoyed that. That was a movie. That was another one of those that uh, like I should have seen it like long time ago. And the second I saw it, it just jumped straight to like probably the top ten my favorite movies of all time. Uh, the fact that it was a uh, it was also a musical didn't didn't hurt it at all. <laughs> like I loved it. Uh, so yeah, yeah. You ever see there's something about Mary? Yeah, that's not the hair gel I use, Garth. <laughs> What are your thoughts on keeping the face starring Steve Martin? I don't, I don't know if I saw that. I don't think I've seen it either, actually. Uh, I know of keeping the faith. I uh, like even a, even if Steve Martin wasn't in it, I don't remember him. I don't. I, I don't remember ever seeing that movie. Um, the other thing I kind of wanted to do real quick. Uh, we're gonna start winding this down. I'm gonna try to like keep it around the hour time frame here uh do you want to play what we were talking about earlier oh my gosh i don't know if i can i don't know if i can pull that one off <laughs> so earlier uh again we were on uh brandon hannah's youtube channel uh where we were talking about science stuff and he he wanted to do a game kind of playing off the fact that we have a show called the tagline uh he wanted to do a game where he had like science articles and then like hey make up a movie title like what would it be about what's the tagline for this this movie based off of these like scientific articles and so we played around with that for a little bit now we were talking about let's take uh what what was it we were actually joking about? like splicing movie titles like or the reverse of that i don't know how the reverse of that works how do you take a movie and make it into like a scientific headline well, or something how about this? Let's take a movie, take the plot, the idea of that movie, but like say it as if it was like a scientific like article or study or something like that. Like this was something that you would actually like, for example, uh, extraterrestrial life form discovers that it is possible to impregnate a human being with its own offspring. Alien. Like you could do that, do something like that. Extraterrestrial life form discovers that Reese's pieces are a delicious candy. <laughs> well, that would be the <laughs> biology of an extraterrestrial is capable of digesting human candy like Reese's pieces. All right. So I'm going to be mad at this and not immediately killing it. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can't give a dog chocolate or grapes. So you could give an alien Reese's Pieces? Okay. As long as the peanut butter is smooth. Call back. Uh, while, while you think of another one, Garth saying, this one for Lola, favorite cats in movie. Uh, Homeward Bound? I, I did like uh, Sassy in Homeward Bound. That was that Sally Field that was doing the voice of that. I liked it because the way they played that was her like playing off of uh shadow and chance uh donna meach and uh michael j fox uh i'm gonna stretch the definition of cats and say the original lion king ah, okay i guess because every other single movie i can think of that has a cat in it aside from homeward bound is awful cats. oliver and company <laughs> Cats. Yeah. Cats, cats and dogs. Um, Garfield. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you could, you could just say Homer, but you could have said Homer bound to 
<laughs> what's what's that uh what's that one movie with uh oh nine lives that kevin spacey movie oh god yeah oh <laughs> no <laughs> yes yeah. um so yeah what other like science so we're gonna call this bit since he called his bit the uh, uh tagline game we're gonna call this one the periodic table <laughs> it's the name of his show <laughs> <laughs> um oh that's a good one meet the parents jinx was great jinxy jinxy can you milk jinxy he's got nipples i got nipples too greg can you milk me yeah i love that line yeah uh i think i'm out of cat movies honestly <laughs> Man experiments with the cloning of extinct species. Ask chaos theory mathematician for advice. Yeah, that was, I love, like, when you actually, like, word it that way, like, I got a chaos, a chaotic, was a chaotician uh, to join us with this. Like, why? Why would you, do? this guy, like, is completely based around chaos theory. Why would you bring him to a park where you actually need to sign off on legitimate cloning of dinosaurs? Of course, he did look good with like the unbuttoned shirt just laying there, like for the ladies type of thing. So that would be why. A uh, new sociological study showing that individuals who are trying to pursue their dreams in the Los Angeles area are not going to be able to fall in love with each other in the long run, <laughs> especially if they sing and dance <laughs> in the middle of the freeway. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> city of stars we got so much pollution we can't see the stars <laughs> the ones in the sky at least <laughs> oh my gosh we really need you to watch that movie again <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah so i mean if you want to go based off of like our uh our favorite movies uh <laughs> oh, <laughs> this no. is gonna be fun. social experiment Tests not only did is it possible for a man to murder his wife and not murder his wife and still get sent to prison, but also is it possible for this man to become best lifelong friends with another man while in the prison system? Here's a good scientific experiment How many football fields full of crap is one man able to climb through in order to reach freedom? <laughs> Depends. Is he allowed to puke in the middle of it? I don't think he has a choice. Oh, okay. <laughs> His body will make that decision for him. <laughs> That's one of those involuntary things that I've heard so much about. <laughs> it's just going to happen. You can't stop it. Oh, God. Oh. Um. And on that note... <laughs> government <Really>? tests... <laughs> The the secret government test whether or not it is capable of bringing together a group of uh, of special individuals to help protect the planet against Loki, which we'll be doing the breakdown and review of Loki episode three. Uh, that will be tomorrow night with Miss Kelsey Kirkland over here on this channel right here. Make sure wow. you join us again tomorrow night. That's wow. going to be at nine p.m. Central Time, seven Pacific, ten Eastern. And back to us playing this game. So the government's going to try to put these superheroes together to go against this Loki. But meanwhile, Disney's going to sue Loki because they he can't use the name Loki. It's against their they own Loki now, apparently, and Thor and Odin and all of that. Did you hear about that? You didn't hear about that. That's why you're not responding. I have yeah, no, no idea what you're talking about. Apparently, Disney is able to uh, sue people who are uh, using the likenesses of Norse mythology characters in their art and stuff. Uh, I'm almost certain that's not going to hold up in court, no matter how good Disney's lawyers are. I don't believe that you would, would hold think. up. You would think. I mean, how are you? The world is not surprising anymore. Um,. What is your favorite government test? I mean, I would I joined the military, so I would have to say the ASVAB. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
Should I be a little here. worried that Malcolm is the one asking this? Like, is are, are you a part of a conspiracy of New Zealand plotting to take over, overthrow the American government, and that's why you're asking? Like, I grew up in Texas, so we had what it was toss and then tax and then now it's star or whatever the standardized test for all the grades growing up in school. So what you're saying is our standardized testing in Texas changes about as often as the temperature. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Malcolm say, I'll never tell. Well, good job, sir. You are a testament to your country's uh, ability to produce people that are really good at keeping silent. <laughs> I'm like kind of trailed off there a little bit. Yeah, you know, I had no idea what direction I was going with that. Uh, we did get a Streamlabs in uh, yeah. from all of the chat, so y'all are all wondering. Uh, they're saying, so what you're saying is your favorite movie is not Jurassic Park 3. Alan. No, Alan. it's not Jurassic Park 3. Alan, Dr so uh, here, here's the thing: you want to turn Jurassic Park three into a science, a, a, a science thing? Like it is a science thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, film production crew tests the limits of a person's ability to watch a third movie in a franchise, knowing full well that this movie is a gigantic piece of Triceratops crap. <laughs> That's a really large pe pile of, uh, <laughs> you know. It's a big pile of crap right there. You do big intend on washing your hands before eating, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Third movies that are awful. There's so many of them. Yeah, like why? The, they have the potential of being good. Why does everyone like just drop off the earth and not give a damn after like the second one? It's studios, man. Studios want you to pump out that third movie so they can get the money really quickly. Oh, that's just that's just awful. They also I mean, sometimes force you to put Venom in the movie when you don't want to put Venom in your movie. We could actually do, and I might keep this in mind as like a back burner idea. We might do a ranking of like the part three of like movie franchises, like the worst to best. Yeah. But like they're all, we have to like preface this by saying that they're all going to be bad. We're ranking the bad part threes of these movies. But, like, say, is Jurassic Park 3 worse than Spider-Man 3? Where's X-Men The Last Stand fall in this? How about Alien 3? Like, let's just rank the third of all of these movies that are considered bad. Which ones are actually, like, uh, I could rewatch this if I needed to. If someone put a gun to my head and <laughs> tied me to a chair, I could watch it. Right. Put Venom in Jurassic World 3. Oh, God. See, like this one. Here, here's a good example. Iron Man 3, typically, again, not uh, at least at the time it came out, was not the strongest of the Marvel movies. And overall, I, I'd probably say it still isn't. But the opinion, I feel like the public opinion of Iron Man 3 has changed over the course of the year since it came out. Iron I Man do. 3... Yeah, I do. I do like Iron Man three now. It's actually gotten so much better since the first time I saw it. Yeah, uh, the rewatchability of that movie is pretty high. It, it it's and it's a decent movie, uh, yeah. especially when you go back and you watch it, and now you you're like, this really isn't an Iron Man movie. This is a Tony Stark movie. That's really what it's all about. So the whole point was that they're one and the same. Yeah, but see, like this, Thor Ragnarok is the third movie, the best of the trilogy. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, but I mean, that wouldn't be on a ranking of bad third movies because it was actually good. Um, and then people argue that Infinity War is probably the best of the of the Avengers movies too. I I personally think Endgame, but I think I Endgame. I understand why people say Infinity War also just because of the stakes and what it did story plot wise. Well, yeah, a lot of people tend to flock to the movies that uh, kind of end like on a downer like that. That's your like Empire Strikes Back. The movie ends with the people that we're rooting for failing. Yeah, what was a, there, there was another one of those uh, recently and I forgot what it was. The it was it, it was a, a very well liked movie. I w I remember I was not a huge fan of it, but I remember hearing there was a lot of comparisons to Empire Strikes Back. 
What movie was that? Don't know. Eh. It was a franchise. It was like a a big franchise movie, and I can't remember what exactly it was. Um. Honestly, Malcolm, I never even made it to Little Fockers because Meet the Fockers, I couldn't. I couldn't watch. Uh, I've, only, I've only really seen Meet the Parents in that in that franchise. I could not. I could not do the second one. Meet the Fockers wasn't bad. Meet the Parents was definitely better. Uh, I can't remember if I've seen Little Fockers. Hmm. Anyways, uh, let's start wrapping this up for tonight. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Y'all got any other final questions? Drop those in real quick. Let's. We'll get to those. Uh, let's go back real quick. Go through uh, stuff that we need to uh, plug. Uh, like I said, tomorrow night will be the Loki episode three. So join us for that. Um, was it next Monday? We're doing the Patreon, the Patreon movie trivia hangout uh, because next Tuesday you have a match in the FCL. So yep, if yep. you're at if you're at the Maverick tier on the Patreon uh at patreon.com slash cinefanax maverick tier you can join us next monday night for a movie trivia hangout uh we're just going to be playing some movie trivia having a good time get helping uh this one over here prepare and study for his match Ooh. so yeah that'll be a lot of fun uh i know we've got uh coming up we will have a captain america the first avenger it's gonna be a public watch along our patreon watch along for july is gonna be space jam with the date and time and everything will be uh we'll we'll talk about that later um what else do we got on the Patreon, if you hop in, even at the $1 tier, you'll have access to our Discord. Uh, the do tier, $5, is the watch along. Uh, the do tier, the $5, you will also have access now to the FCL replay. So e anytime either one of us has a match in the FCL the following Thursday, uh, we will play We will play through that, that match and whichever one of us has played, will give our thoughts, feelings, opinions, what was going on in your head at that time. Um, I have a lot of fun doing those just because yeah. it's so, it's so kind of cool to like tell you what exactly was in my head and what our thought process was for these questions and what happened. So uh, it's that will be the exclusive, uh, the exclusive on what we thought about our matches and, and all that. It's a great place to go. If you want to know exactly what we were thinking, we're going to yeah. get you the exclusive before we hit up any like after shows or anything. Yeah. So again, uh, next Tuesday, a week from today, will be his match. The following Thursday, we'll be doing the FCL replay. Tentative, because I get my second shot the Wednesday before that Thursday. So I may not be up to it on Thursday. Yeah. For right now, though, we're planning on that Thursday. Why does everyone keep talking about this? You didn't steal a match from me. Whatever. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, no clue. Uh, otherwise, you can follow us, the Cinefanatics, <laughs> at Cinefanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram. And yep. do we have any other questions left? Yes, we have Vernon is asking trivia. FCL, what's that? Uh, Vernon should know better. Um, <laughs> yeah, come on now. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of which, what are you doing next Wednesday? <laughs> Me? Other than the, other than the Loki breakdown, yeah, and getting the second shot, I'm getting poked again. <laughs> I remember the second time I got poked. It was great. That was a weird phrase. The second time I got a shot. Anyways. <laughs> It's been a long day, y'all. Like it's been like super busy over here on our end. Uh, again, we did this uh, this video with uh, we did this we did this live stream with Brandon Hanna earlier. Go check out his YouTube channel. It's the Periodic Table is the show that we did. It was a lot of fun talking about turning like plastic bottles into vanilla and starch into a form of uh, energy, and a lot of a lot of other fun we had over there. So go check. Make sure y'all check that out. Uh, and give him a subscribe as well. Uh, as for us, yeah, I think that's going to be it. So thank you all for watching. <laughs> What's your favorite Pokemon?
I'm guessing that's why he's asking. Or he's just talking about, <sighs> joke about being poked. As we end this, what's your favorite Pokemon? I can't remember, honestly. I like Pikachu. He's the one that I am most familiar with. Exactly. Actually, I like Mewtwo just because he's like the all-powerful Mew or Mewtwo. <laughs> no, he's I, not. I, no, okay, whatever. As far as I know, he's the most powerful. Now, whatever you Poke nerds have discovered since Mew or Mewtwo, that's cool. There's a Poke God, so we'll put it that way. Oh, good Lord. What's your favorite Poke Bowl? I'll answer the same. Uh, Pikachu. <laughs> Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, thank y'all for watching. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, like I like these light, like kind of hangout ones. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this. Uh, make sure y'all drop us a like. If you like this, make sure to hit that like button down below. If you're watching this on a replay, if you enjoyed this episode, comment down below. Let us know that you enjoyed it. What other questions do you have? Just drop some questions down below. We're eager to answer these questions if anyone's eager to ask them. So that'd be a lot of fun. Make sure you share this with uh, your friends, family. Let them know what you're watching, what you're into. Get them to come over and watch and be into it. Then y'all could be talking about us like afterwards and that's the way YouTube grows and works and stuff. Uh, you can also subscribe. Hit the subscribe button because that's exactly what YouTube wants you to do. Uh, hit the bell so you know when we go live. And, yeah, that's going to be it. You have anything else? I'm good. Yeah. So, therefore, we're going to wrap this up. Y'all all have a great evening. We appreciate y'all watching us live here in the chat. We will see y'all tomorrow night for the Loki breakdown. Until then... Have a great evening. See you later. Later.